Friday at Pizza Flicks. A giant among sci-fi filmmakers, Bert I. Gordon didn't think small. On the contrary, he took tiny creatures and created colossal monsters. So fasten your seatbelts for a rocket trip to the far reaches of our galaxy and the directorial debut of the man who would be known as Mr. Big. On the morning of March 18th, at precisely 7.48 a.m., a coded message directed to our president was cabled from this observatory. A message of such vital importance that our Congress was called into an emergency session. A phenomenon out there in space was the subject of these top secret communications. It wasn't long until the astronomers of other nations also discovered what had happened. now had a new neighbor. A new planet had moved into our solar system and had established its orbit around the sun so close to Earth that for the first time it was conceivable to believe that man on Earth could actually travel to another planet. A planet that had every indication that its atmosphere would support life. Many of the mysteries of this vast ocean of space would soon be solved. It would be a race between countries to see which one would be the first, the first to bring our civilization to another planet in space. April 23rd, the word to start comes from Washington. And immediately, our finest research laboratories change over to this all-important project, the building of a passenger-carrying rocket ship. Every security measure is taken. Test upon test must be made to develop, improve, create, invent. A jet engine must be built with a thrust great enough to launch the spaceship through the many miles of Earth's atmosphere. It must also be able to withstand the pressures found in outer space. June 3rd. With the aid of unusually favorable atmospheric conditions, Professor Albert Garnett is able with the world's largest telescope to photograph an extremely clear view of the new planet. It is now certain that plant life of some kind definitely exists there. The professor, incidentally, is also credited with naming the new planet, Planet Nova. New metals must be developed with tensile strength capable of withstanding great atmospheric pressures. Switch on for jet engine test number 87. Structural weaknesses are studied. Tested. Every conceivable test for man and machine alike is run the gauntlet. There is no margin for error. Special equipment is developed. This nuclear power plant will serve as an auxiliary source of electricity while our people are on the planet. 
Actually, because it is activated by atomic power, it could supply their needs for many years if something were to go wrong and their return to Earth were delayed. Naturally, the people must be careful in using such equipment, because if the atomic power were allowed to go unharnessed, an atomic fission reaction would take place, an atom explosion. A time clock is the controlling mechanism for this reaction. They, of course, will understand its use and therefore minimize any danger. Pressure vaults are constructed to simulate the pressures found in space. Record every vibrating pulse. Turbojet engines used in assisting takeoffs of our giant bombers are studied. But there lies the greatest problem, blasting the ship off the ground and out of Earth's gravity pull. The first test rocket is ready. Test number two. This rocket carries animals, white mice. As the rocket zooms upward, gravity is still present to hold the mice and little ball downward toward Earth. Now the mice are floating in air since they are now beyond Earth's gravity pull. The test proves out. Animals can live in space. It's man's turn next to take the calculated risk. The spaceship is ready now for its passengers. If animal life is found on the new planet Nova, an expert on zoogeography would be a most important member of the space expedition. On August 10th, Dr. Richard Gordon was chosen to fill that position. He became famous with his discovery of the giant prehistoric tar pits near Salt Lake City just two years ago. The study of rock formations and its minerals is like reading the personal diary of a planet. Dr. Nora Pierce joined the space expedition on August 27th. Her doctorate in mineralogy was awarded for her mineralogical research in the Himalayan mountains. That same day, the giant spaceship was being wheeled into position for its space flight, which was now a matter of weeks away. Medicine must be represented on this expedition, since the health of these people and the people that will venture into space in the future is of primary importance. Dr. Ralph Martin's war service fortified him with the experience of treating most diseases and fatalities that overtake men, that is, on our Earth. The chemistry of the new planet was to be studied by Dr. Patricia Bennett, who completed the group of scientists. She was noted for her thesis on the use of radiochemistry in medicine. Dr. Bennett entered the group on September 12th. On October 1st, it was observed that the position of Nova was in the most advantageous location for our purpose. The ship must blast off within 24 hours. Attention, attention. The members of the expedition will please report to the ship. Blast off is in X minus 20 minutes. Attention, blast off in X minus five minutes. Blast off in X minus one minute.
ship kept on its course without the least deviation. The people on Earth followed the ship's progress as long as possible with powerful telescopes and with radar. To our people inside, the days, the weeks, the months, all went by without mishap. We made it. Is it as lovely as it seems? Yes, if it's habitable. An active volcano. This planet is quite young, Pat. We're going to start our test, Dick, to see if it's safe to remove our suits. Your instruments are on their way down. Hurry up with the test so Nora and I can get out and join you, huh? Preliminary biological study made of the air on Nova show the indications of microscopic life not too different from that found on Earth. However, approximately 40% of the bacteria was completely unfamiliar. Tests for radiation gave a reading of approximately 10% above normal background count. Liquid tested for biotic contents indicated less than a tolerable percentage. Temperature, 78 degrees. Air pressure, 13.8 pounds per square inch. Although our preliminary tests are in no way conclusive, they do substantiate, however, that human and animal life as we know it on Earth can exist in the atmosphere and environment of planet Nova. Now, let's get out of these suits. Dick, Nora. The atmosphere checks out all right. It's safe to come out. The air is a bit rich in oxygen, notice. Anyway, it'll speed up our reactions. Oh, you take care of your own reactions, Doctor. Anything, Nora? This is just great. 
There's animal life here. There must be plenty of water, then. Listen, I saw a lake over in that direction before we landed. Let's go over and take a look. Okay. All right. Look, birds. They look like vultures. Look at that tree. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Well, there it is, just like I saw on the scope. As pretty a lake as anyone would want, and it's all private. But what about that island? It's a strange looking place. Looks like it's covered with heavy jungle growth. There's no sun over there. I'd like to have a look at that when we have time. I don't see why, Nora. All they want in Washington are tests and samples from wherever we land. They didn't say anything about extensive exploration. You conservative doctors. Well, I don't care. All I can see is that water, and that means a bath, Nora, and let's get some clean clothes and have one, huh? Uh-huh. Ah, ladies first, please. <laughs> Much further? I want some samples from that rock strata. What would you say it is? Say it's about three o'clock Earth time here. Except that we don't know how many hours there are in the daily cycle here. You know, this place could move around faster than our Earth. Well, let's figure it for three o'clock anyway. That gives us three or four hours before dark. Cropping's further than we thought. Oh, a couple of more miles should bring us there. A couple of more miles as the crow flies, but five miles up and down those hills. Yes, but walking is a whole lot easier than digging. What do you think, Nora? About the age of this place? <laughs> Fraser Gens was right. It's pretty young as planets go, much younger than our Earth. What era would you say it is? Prehistoric. Are you serious, Nora? Look, let's get out of here and get back to the ship. I'm scared to death, and I don't mind admitting it. What about it, Nora? Do you have enough? Yes, for the kind of preliminary survey they want. I can get more information while the rest of you are working. That island, I wonder what's over there. Well, vegetation certainly looks different from that around here. Maybe we can pay it a quick visit before we leave. Let's let the next people pay it a visit. Let's get back to the ship, get out of here before something awful happens to all of us. We better go, it's getting dark. Do we know the way? doesn't get dark too soon, we're all right. Is this the way we came? I'm not sure.
dead. Right. There's not much point in tramping through the woods all night. What do you say we fix ourselves a place and sleep here? It'd be a lot easier to find our way in the daylight. Fine. about that? Home sweet home. Looks real good, huh? Uh-huh. Step up to the front desk and register. <laughs> That's an owl. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be real comfortable. <laughs> well, it's not the Waldorf, but I like it. Here, Pat, hang this up, will you? Okay. Ralph, let's get the packs. Now, Ralph and I are going to split the watches three hours apiece. So it should take us up until daylight. You girls get some sleep. No reason why we can't take a watch, too. Yes, there is. Oh, dang. No arguments. I'll get some sleep. Now, I'll take the first one. Okay. Wake me up a little early, will you? What's he gonna call me? I'm okay. But as long as I felt all right, I'd stay with it a while longer. Looks like the second shift's gonna be a little wet. Good night, old man. Tell me, Doctor, do you still want to marry me? No, I do. Thank you. 
Ralph. Ralph, Ralph! Let's get him back to camp. I can't find a kit, sir. Get the kit. Get me the canteen. Get the canteen! <laughs> Nobody's fault. What were you doing away from this area anyway? You know you're not supposed to leave camp. I know, I know. You better get some sleep. You're gonna need it. You better keep a sharp lookout from now on. Is he? He's in no shape to travel. We'd better leave him here. Not alone. No, you stay with him. We'll find our way back to the ship and get the supplies. Oh, Pat, we can bring your lab equipment back. Then you can work here at least better. Fine. Just don't leave this area. We've taken all but one canteen, but go easy on the water. Okay, but hurry back, will you? back to the ship for supplies and equipment. You've been unconscious for a day and a half. Oh, I don't remember what happened. You were hurt, but you're all right now. Ooh. You've been here all alone? 
Somebody had to stay with you. Couldn't be left alone. Well, I'm all right now. Oh. Take it easy. You know, after a bout like you've had, you've got to relax and rest. Come here. I need some medicine. When will he be back? We'll see. Try to rest. Where'd you pick this one up? We didn't. He picked us up. That's Joe. Hello, Joe. Hey, Joe. Go investigate the lady. Wake her up, boy. Oh, hi. Boy, am I glad you're back. Did you have a good trip? Lovely, if you like walking. Anything unusual, Dick? What's unusual anymore? Saw something that looked like a Sherman tank, but it didn't bother us. Hey, who's the cook in the outfit tonight? I'll do it. I bet you're hungry. This one's been eating all day long. Good. He'll get his strength back faster that way. Did you find anything today, Dick? Besides Joe, I mean. I got a whole bag full of specimens. Near as I can figure, this place will support a lot of people. If we had to stay here for any length of time, we should be able to live off the land without much trouble. Thanks, but I'll take Earth, USA. Me too. Hey, what are the plans for tomorrow? Well, I thought Nora and I'd finish our tests and samplings, and then I thought... And then I want to take a look at that island. I seem to remember some instructions about not separating. We haven't run into anything we can't handle, Ralph. You know, I think they all read too much science fiction. You know, they probably thought we'd meet some kind of super race up here or something. Why don't we all go together? Doctor, you know better than the rest of us that you're in no shape to travel. That's right. So, Nora and I'll take one of the rubber rafts tomorrow and spend the day on the island. Pat, you... you do whatever work you can around here. <laughs> What are we going to do about watches tonight? I'll take the first one. I'll get some sleep when it gets light. Hey, I heard that business about the watches. I may be a little weak, but I can still handle a gun. Oh, don't be silly, Ralph. You need to rest. Look, maybe we don't need a watch. Joe seems to be pretty good at shouting alarms. Let's count on Joe for extras. I'm taking the first one.
Are you sure you're all right, Ralph? In the pink, there's nothing like a good, quiet night's sleep. If you have to get back to the ship for any reason, the best way is along the shoreline of the lake. It's too easy to get lost going through the jungle. Nor are we better travel light. Got to pick up that raft on the way. By the way, there's a flare gun in each of those rubber rafts. If you're not back by dark, you better fire a couple. If you're okay, make it white. Any trouble, red. Better yet, just stay out of trouble. And take good care of Joe. I'm getting very fond of him. See you later, fellas. Bye. Help me with this. Do you remember any of your chemistry? Enough to know about the chemistry between us. Look, mister, it's daytime for business. Let's get this thing over with so we can get home. That time can't come too soon for me. Come on, boy. Joe, come on. Come I'm not on, gonna let's wait go. for you. Let's go. Come on. Joe, come on. Let's shove off. Looks pretty barren. This was your idea. Look at the flock of birds. So that's where those vultures have been coming from. There must be something on the island that attracts them. It looks a little forbidding. Hmm. That shore doesn't look too bad. Let's paddle over that way. Aye, aye, Captain. Colder here. I'll put the raft over there. All right. Let's get going, Nora. Here, take Joe.
Learn anything? Lots of things. Like what, for instance? Like, for instance, you may be a wonderful doctor, but you're an awful patient. Well, that's a privilege that only a doctor can afford. Seriously, what have you gotten from all these tests? Well, for one thing, there's lots of bacteria that exist here that don't on Earth. Which means stay healthy because there might not be a cure for them, right? Right. What a desolate, forsaken place. Get that rumbling. Almost an animal roar. Still sounds like thunder to me. Do you want to go on or turn back? Let's go on. Looks like a cave up on that ledge. Nick, that isn't thunder. I know, I know it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hand me that Barry pistol. Are you thinking of Ralph and Pat? I hate to bring them into this. It's our only way out of here. Stay right here. Don't move. Something awful's happened. Listen to that noise. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> Flare, Pat. They're in trouble. Resembles the Tyrannosaurus Rex of Earth's prehistoric age. Tyrannosaurus Rex. King Dinosaur. To think, this monster dominates Nova just as similar ones dominated Earth 125 million years ago. It's like living in the past. It's a good likeness, isn't it?
We're closer. In that canyon. Dad! I brought the atom bomb. I think it's a good time to use it. Oh, All right, set for 8 o'clock. That's a half an hour from now. Come on, let's get out of here.
Sure have done it. Brought civilization to planet Nova. Come on, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> 